Hey, I'm Albo, and I love JDM cars and culture. In each episode in this multi-channel crossover series, I'll go on car adventures around Japan with Captain Bradford from JDM Masters, along with our car club and fellow YouTubers Japonic, Samet, Dustin Williams, and others. Join us as we do car stuff, explore Japanese culture, and show you what it's really like in the land of the rising sun. This is our JDM life, and we are the Super JDM Bros. この番組はご覧のスポンサーの提供でお送りしました。Hey guys, welcome to today's video. It's actually a continuation of this one over here in the corner. I got a little bit sidetracked because of the last two earthquake videos, but anyway, Cap and I are on our way to meet Jomoto san from Spoon Sports for some Honda action. What is up, folks? It's a beautiful day, and we are headed to the Spoon testing day. And we're going to be checking out Spoon's demo cars. I'm here with Cap. Woo! What a day to be alive! This is my first time being invited to an RD testing day, so I'm pretty hyped up. I mean, this whole area looks like Autumn r a i n from, from Gran Turismo. So, as a bit of background, the reason we're here today is because of a personal invitation from Spoon through our friend Jomoto san, who's one of the top guys at the company. He and Captain have known each other for many, many years. And it's pretty cool to be able to work together with him and with Spoon directly. Looks like we have arrived. We got the Spoon guys over here. I think that may be Jomoto san. Ohayo! Ohayo! Look at that. I kept this for, for, for three, today. Just for, for today. today. 20 years. Yeah, it's been this. 20 years in the making of this video. This. We're Tracking. here at um, Autumn Ring. No, sorry. <laughs> Like some Gran Turismo original circuit. Yeah, yeah it does when you come around. inside because of the forest in the area, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we are finally here at the track where we're gonna be meeting up with the Spoon guys. Whew, it's nice to be at the track. It's nice to smell burning rubber and frying clutches and just to hear those sounds. Like you have a lot of people, a lot of cars are running doing tests here and it's just, it's just really exciting. With Open track day, but also、um, Spoon is here to testing for their、uh, development cars,、uh, the FK8, and also the Revival E39, which I see over there. Let's go have a look. Ooh, yeah, yeah,、excited. sounds good. Should we head over there?、Mm. Ah, really frustrating because of the fence, you can barely see. FK8 is dropped by. Ooh, this is b a c k i n g in. Here we go, that's the FK7. There's the FK8. I can barely see anything because of this damn fence. You got your spoon mask, bro. I've got my spoon mask. Oh, you、bro. still have it wrapped? You have of course, it. Of course, everything's wrapped. Preserved. I'm, I'm so Japanese that's, now. That's so you.、Yeah. I, got, I got my spoon mask over here, too. Limited edition goods. Oh, I'm fancy. Ooh, beautiful. Roof spoiler, or not roof spoiler,、um, hatch spoiler. That thing looks sick. But this, this is what is really special. And the driver right now is Ishizima san, who is actually the president of Spoon. Be able to see new generation and old generation side by side together, that is really, really cool. What I really love about the Spoon cars. It's the SW388 wheels. They look super good.、Uh, let's go say hi to Ishizen san. So it's interesting, you can see that Cap is actually really in really, really good terms with Spoon.、Uh, they've known each other for like 10, 15 years, a very, very long time, which is why we're actually able to be here during this top secret testing day、uh, where they're testing new parts for the FK8 and the FK7.、Uh, And you know, it's, it's, it's pretty crazy how you can basically kit out the entire car with full on spoon parts and you take it to the track and it will perform a world class level.、And、spoon is pretty much you know, the coolest, in my opinion, the coolest Honda aftermarket、uh, part tuning service. They did, a whole, they did a whole thing and the FK8 looks just beautiful. 
I mean, look at those wheels, 18 inch SW388s. Let's take a look at the engine bay over here. Let's see. Yellow head cover. Oh, that looks, that looks sick. Hey, let's take a let's take a picture of this. One. Look at that. Oh, looks like Cap is really excited. Oh wow, oh, look how clean it is. It's like new. What is she trying to do? Oh my god. Cap super excited. Oh man, you could eat out of this engine bay. Look how stunningly. Clean it is. Shit. Look at the manifold. Gotta check if it has enough oil. It's one of these things with these VTEC cars. They need a ton of oil. Look at the interior. So I believe this is actually for. Look at that. This, this car is actually for sale, and you could pick it up for around six or seventy thousand dollars. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold. Oh yeah, that. Oh, okay, okay. I love the way this steering wheel feels. It's fantastic. I want to ask you guys, which one would you pick? Would you pick the EK9 or the FK8? Which one resonates with you more? For me, growing up the PlayStation generation, it's the the EK9 will always have a special place in my heart, but the FK8 looks super, super, super cool. And although it is a turbo, although it is a much bigger car than the EK9, there's something special about it. Just the way, even just the way it looks, you know, it, it's it's so computer generated, it's so aggressive, and the performance is actually it's pretty incredible for, for what it is, for, for what you can get out of the box. Um, you know, the FK8, out of the box I've heard has some heating issues and uh, that's why I think they're trying to improve its reliability and Spoon is really really good with with creating parts that really take the stock car to the next level while still maintaining that uh, reliability and taking that performance just a notch higher. gonna fill up so I have some energy. Let me, let me tell you guys what this tastes like. Alright, here we go. Mm. You just cannot go wrong with Japanese curry. It's savory, it's a little bit spicy. It just mixes so well with the white rice and this uh, deep fried pork cutlet, which we call katsu. So this whole meal together is called katsu kare. It's great on a cool morning. And when I was working as an English teacher, this was my favorite school lunch. Mm. Now you might think that um, bread in Japan isn't, you know, they won't really do it well, but actually they do an excellent job of making uh, basic pastry products. I would say quite a little bit better than uh, those back home. It's because it's this tendency for Japanese chefs or patissiers or whatever you want to call them to take a lot of pride in first of all replicating the finest points of like any kind of cakes pastry and we've seen many times like to my you know surprise that um, often they actually taste better than those back home and i think one of the points is that in japan the basic ingredients whether it's wheat or rice or flour or meat or any kind of like agricultural produce is already at a much higher quality than those back home embarrassingly i'm mean, like you know bread is a western invention right but how can they do this better than than those back home it's just unbelievable even mm. even the pork mm. pork has never tasted so good it's because like that Japan. wonderful japanese grass over there all right so right now they're doing the testing and it's just super super cool fk8 is just so beautiful in person especially when it's dropped a little bit and it's on these sw388s and it's got the full spoon kit it just looks so purposely it well it is purpose built like these guys are true maniacs. I mean, they love Honda 
so much and type R performance that they have staked their entire careers on creating a legendary company. All right, let's, let's watch it drive away. Look how good that looks. Dude, how good does that look? What, what do you think? It looks amazing. It looks better with the with the ring. With the huge Swan X. Yeah. Ring. In what general, I'm not a huge fan of Swan X, but on this, uh, maybe it's because it's 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 kind of a smaller Swan X, almost. You know why? Because it's not a Swan X that usually is used in GT. It's the shape of the of the crane of spoon. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why. You look at it carefully. The, yeah. Uh, you, I'll, I'll show you. Look. Yeah. This shape right here is actually a motive of uh, the crane used by Ichishima's uh, motive. So it's not as high as of the, the classic spoon logo, the classic right? Spoon logo. Well, yeah. is, is there one around here? Like the one in your car, maybe over there somewhere. Yeah. Like, like, like this one. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, the more I look at it, the more. You know what they, the bumper? The different bumper looks really good. Much better, right? It's it looks much better. It, yeah. And it's. Real vents. Real vents. Real vents. Real vents. Real vents. Real vents. One. They fixed it. They, they, they fixed, fixed it. the FK8. This is how it should be. What do you think? Should I trade my <laughs> S2000 and Forrester SDI for, for one of these? Honestly, no. It's still an overpowered front wheel drive, which is still a bit hard to control. Although it's very exciting in a straight line. But yeah. you probably have more fun cornering with your S2000. There's nothing else like it. There's no other Honda like it. You know what this doesn't do? Top doesn't go down. That, and that's, that, that's right. it. That's it. Because like, you always need to go topless. Yeah. Even in a wheel. I love topless. Yeah. No, just topless. Yeah. Just. Holy knock is that man. <laughs> Holy knock. <laughs> These are the SW388s. Uh, so called those because of the weight. So historically they were 3.88 kilograms. Uh, and they were very light because unlike the Reg Masters, which these are actually based off of, they use a really, really lightweight paint. Technically, these are pretty much the exact same wheels as uh, the 
the Regomasters, but I don't know, just seeing them in the matte black with the yellow spoon sports sticker, ugh, it just looks so good. It looks amazing. Behind us, we have this wonderful old 90s car. We have right here an underpowered Japanese. Uh, Econobox. What? No, it's not an underpowered Econobox. It's 1.6 liters. It's got 190 horse. What are you talking about? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's not. Okay, it's not as powerful. 300 as horsepower. Mm -hmm. See, this is why modern cars are better. But it's 1,050 kilograms. That's 300 kilograms lighter than this heavy big boy here. But you don't need all that power to have front wheel drive. Uh -huh. You just need. I, you're just biased because you have an EK9 over no, there. No, no, so, no, no, okay, no, no, can no. you tell us why this is such a good car? I know you have a good magazine over there. Don't cheat, okay? All right. Don't cheat. <laughs> okay, fine. No, you can't look at the strategy guide. <laughs> Why is it such a good car? Why? Because it's compact and it's light. No. As Colin Chapman of Lotus once famously said, add lightness and there's no replacement for light. Displacement. Okay, that's a different, that's a different <laughs> trend of thought. But when, when you remove something, it's always easier to get good handling rather than adding more power. So you can add a lot of power to a heavy car, but it yeah. does change the way the car feels. So that's why 90s cars have very, very good balance mechanics. Now, the EK Civic is the final and third iteration of the Civic line that came with the V16 engine and also the double wishbone front suspension, which is very, very important. So the last iteration is it's got the stiffest body, uh, which contributes a lot to the uh, body rigidity, so it's it's no, basically no, no, wait, wait, it's, 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 it's quite it's quite light it's quite rigid and it's body rigidity contributes to very good handling and sharp response and yeah. they've also perfected in the last model uh, the wheelbase to track ratio and also the rear stability of the arms and the spoon version refines on the already very very good base of the Type R which is the yeah. third of the Type Rs uh, that came out after the NSX and the Integra this. Uh, was actually the finest engine of the B series. It's the final finale. Now, Spoon's version is doesn't make a whole lot much more power, but it takes what is already a very good base and just tune it up just even a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So you have that difference between a very sharp knife and the factories that even more finely razor lightsaber cutting through butter and destroying everything in its path. Like okay, that. that's a bit of an like exaggeration, that. but when you drive one of these things, you feel that mechanical interaction which is something that you can't get with cars these days um everything is just tuned such that there's no electronic assistance mm. it's just the joy of driving and you still get the good sound but it's still modern enough 90s cars are still very very relevant to today's cars what's interesting is spoon is still developing this car in 2020 they're perfecting it like more little by little by little right actually they're not this one is just a replica no i wouldn't say it's a replica it's a remake a remodel a of refresh, the what they call it, of the one that was there. This, this book yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. Because so many years have passed, and you know, what they're actually doing is to um, make this car again so that people who love this EK or DC generation can actually get a car that is better than what a was brand new that? car when it was new. Oh, then the brand new EK. And then a brand new EK yeah. out from the factory, and it's mm. just plus another 15%. It, it, it's like our whole concept of, well, not, I guess not really our original concept, but like OEM Plus. It's OEM Plus. It is, it is, it, it is, it is, it's that OEM Plus taken to <laughs> the <laughs> penultimate level. Cheesy, but kind of looks okay. Orange strut, I would take that off, but the strut itself is ex quite expensive. Or just the strut. It is. Yeah. It is. But, but I love the dry carbon hood. I mean, what? Yeah. White carbon? Yeah. I would. I would still paint it back white just to make it look, look like it's all original, but this is the style I, I, that I think, you know, dreams you, Yeah, actually, there's no, there's no vents, right? No, there's no vents. Yep. So it's, it's just like this. This yeah, black yeah, yeah, yeah. bonnet and white body, and even, you know, the white uh, or the yellow body with the black bonnet, that was the iconic thing that got everyone into this kind of carbon fiber sort of bonnet look, you know, and it's just iconic. If you guys have played Gran Turismo, you could see this car. Um, in, in the game, of course, it has a different engine back then, mm -hmm. 11,000 RPM, but this was really interesting. This had 2,000 cc to stop developing that. This is still the B16B, 1.6 liters, but with the uh, full exhaust train. All these parts you can actually buy from the catalog, and still, they make that for the older models because we know a lot of people love these cars, and it's, you know, Neo Classics restored. Why, would, so, why wouldn't you want that? Let me, let me give this to you. Let me, you can be the camera, cameraman for a second. And, okay. So, you know, when I see this in person, honestly, like compared to your car, it looks quite similar. 
it's the little details. Uh, I feel I feel like Spoon is all about like little details, like the spoon, the spoon blue calipers. I love like it's it's as silly as the color, the shade of it really makes the wheels pop. It really contrasts well with the type of the championship white. And there's something about the EK9 that it just it, it just already has such a classic look. It's it's almost as classic as well, it is as classic as like the NA Roadster, right? Because they're from that same generation. And there's some, just something about this type of design. When you see a design like this, it's so simple in direct contrast with the standard FK8, which is all kind of zigzag and crazy lines. Although beyond the spoon body kit, they really kind of simplified it, and it does give me a little bit of an impression of harkening back to the design of the EK9, which is a lot more simple, a lot more you could say even elegant. Let's take a look at the inside. It's gonna drive away. Never come back. Okay. So this is the, the Pokemon, unlike yours, which is the Zenki. Uh, this is the facelifted edition. And one of the interesting things about Spoon is they have the the Dura. What is it? The Dura. Um, Duracon. The Duracon shifter. Which the nice thing about it is it doesn't get cold, too cold or too hot, and it's quite light. Which before I didn't really like uh, light shifters, but now I like them a lot because they give you a lot of st of uh, shifter feel. Uh, and this this wheel, this uh, I think it's a Momo tuner uh, with the really uh, subtle Spoon Sports badge. Like this whole look, there's just something classy about the way Spoon does things which I think is why so many folks around the world, they often prefer it to like Mugen or just the, the standard uh, Honda factory modulo brand. Like, Fun fact, yep. the steering wheel and the shift knob has not been changed since the, since the EG days. They're still using these two items even for the FK8. They still wow. insist on using the same they, they stand a test of time and, and they also have a certain feel to it, like there's this heritage to it, right? Which, you know, it's, it's, it's as simple as like, like, like that distance, right? Well, if you have like a like 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 a much different wheel, or if you have like a different bow, or like I don't know, like all, all these proportions are are like iconic now. So I think you know what Spoon is trying to do. I don't know, maybe you can correct me, but it's like they're trying to keep that that memory alive, and I think that's pretty commendable. Like, this is really cool. Like this interior is so nice. I mean, did they refinish the top up here, or is that standard? It's probably not restored, it's just the body. The interior has been left alone, it hasn't been restored yet. Okay, okay. So the interior is pretty clean. I mean, the, it's a Japanese the car that car. they bought uh, was already in very good condition. Yeah. 187,000 clicks. Look at that. Yeah. This thing has quite... That's when, that's when the car was bought, and so now everything's all back to zero, because the, the gearbox, wow. suspension bushes, and the engine have all been restored. Yeah. The new. This is like, uh, internally, it's quite new, right? Yes. I love the Honda jacket, by the way. Oh yeah, Honda. Can I have this? This is so sick. No, oh, it's worth a lot of money. This is oh, this man. is from Arjun Senna's era of F1 Honda racing, man. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. gotta you gotta have the shoes to complete the look. Yeah. Hi. Okay. So what's going on? We're gonna I'm gonna do a video with Jishima san. All right. Yeah. Okay. Are you gonna do a ride along, or are we gonna take it? Ah. Uh, 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 for your channel. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna so do that sure for my channel. Take, uh, the video, uh, JDM Masters. Right here. Basically, behind the scenes of JDM Masters on Elbow's channel. So here, Cap is interviewing Ichishima san, who is the founder of Spoon. Super cool. Very crazy. And we're later on, we're actually going to get a chance to drive the EK9. We're going to take it out for a little run outside uh, because we don't have a license for the track, so we're not able to go for a run on the track. But we're going to be able to take it out, and we'll let you guys know what we think uh, about the driving experience. Spoon EK9 and Cap's own EK9, and you can see his is the Zenki model. Quite similar. But why don't we take a look inside? Let, let's hop inside his car. And let's just sit down. Okay. Oh, nice and warm. Okay. 
Yeah. So the thing about Cap is he loves sitting really, really close to the steering wheel. I don't know. For, for me, I prefer it to be a little bit further back, but out of courtesy, I'm not going to move the seat. It's, uh, I think it's kind of a, a point uh, where you don't move the seat uh, unless you're given explicit permission because, you know, once you got your settles, once you got your settings dialed in, you want to keep it like that. So, anyway, I mean, so yeah, so this is Cap's EK9. It looks uh, pretty standard. Got some random stuff over here. I'm just gonna chill here because it's getting a little bit cold outside uh, while they work on their video over here for JDM Masters. I gotta get out because uh, I'm gonna be their shot now. So I'm just mosey on out of here. in the car for a bit and cool down or, or warm up and you know what while I'm here let me just take this moment to wax a little bit poetic you know it's crazy because growing up I was such a huge fan of spoon because of the super cool spoon livery and when I found out about their connection to Honda and what they do I'm like man this company is so cool and I hope that one day <clears throat> I would have the chance to own an S2000 and bring it to Spoon and maybe even put some Spoon parts on it. Well, to be here today, to be working with them, to be making content together with Jomoto-san and Ichishima-san, uh, with, with Cap, it's crazy, you know? I never forget that I'm just this kid from Toronto who grew up not even being able to own his own car until he was like 23 years old when I first got my first Roadster. A decade later, I finally have kind of like what was my, what was my childhood dream car? And I'm kind of like really living the dream. So I guess what I want to say is, you know, you can, you can really accomplish anything that you put your mind to it if you have a goal of what that thing you want to accomplish is. You know, in the last couple of videos, I've been telling you guys that one of my goals is to go full time uh, with YouTube this year. I want to produce content and make stuff that you guys want to watch and especially because we're here we have a connection to like Spoon to Japan and it's I feel such a privilege to be able to be here. Anyway guys I don't know I'm just going in this rant but I, I do hope that you're able to take something away from this which is that basically you just have to figure out what you want to do and you just got to go for it and just keep keep going like I just didn't stop with YouTube I just kept going and here we are, like 10 years later, I'm kind of like really living my dream life. And I want it for you guys too, because I want to let you know that it is so within reach. It is so accessible. And when I see guys like my friends Dustin Williams and Samet, and, and these guys are just killing it, you know, it shows me that there's a path and it gives me confidence. So I want to tell you guys that same path exists for you as well. You guys have just have to figure out a way to produce something, make something, create, and leave a legacy. Anyways, that's just my little rant for you guys. Hope it's inspirational. And back to the regularly scheduled content. Thanks for watching. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. In the next couple of videos, we'll interview Jomoto-san and then take the Spoon EK9 for a test drive. But overall, I just want to say that it was a fantastic experience to see how one of Japan's leaders in engine tuning and aftermarket parts conducts its tests to develop and refine products that people like us will eventually be able to purchase and enjoy on our own cars. Hopefully, we'll get to go on more adventures with Spoon to delve deeper into the culture and history of Japanese motorsports. So until then, we hope you enjoyed this episode, and please leave a comment and make sure to subscribe for more. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next video.